Well, good morning and Merry Christmas Eve, everyone. My name is John and I'm one of the pastors here and we welcome you to our Christmas service. Um, just as we do every week, in a moment we're going to invite you to stand and worship with us through singing. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and continue our Advent tradition here by lighting the candles. So up to this point, we've lit three candles, which has been the candle of peace, hope, and joy. And today we'll light the candle of love on this fourth Advent Sunday. So let's take a moment and prepare to worship. And I invite you now to stand and let's worship together.
God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. We sing glory to God. Glory to God.
worship you this morning. Lord, I ask that you will just continue to fall in this space. And would you so gently remind us the reason that we gather this morning, the reason why we say that the night of your birth was so divine and so holy. We thank you for all that you are, all that you have been, and all that you continue to be. And we bless your name this morning. And in your name, amen. Amen, amen. Please be seated. Well, we're going to continue our worship this morning by taking a moment to honor God through our giving. You see, when we come to celebrate Christmas, we're recognizing that it's all about generosity because God has been generous by giving himself to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And so in response, we want to be generous as well. And for us as a church here at Vineyard Columbus, we have a desire and a commitment to be generous by becoming the best friend to this city. For those of you who might be new, um, we have several campuses located throughout the city in central Ohio. And we serve each respective communities in those locations. And a special fact about this campus right here where you're sitting at or where you're watching from here in Westerville is that we have a community center. A community center that really serves generously the community around us. We serve uh, the next generation among us through the early childhood center, uh, in school, after school, summer school, all kinds of school programs. And not only the next generation, we also serve those who are in need among us through uh, health clinics, free health clinics, uh, immigration counseling, as well as a robust ESL program that actually has hundreds of people coming in and out of this building throughout the week. And through these ministries, in this past year alone, we have served over 24,000 individuals, and we are so grateful for that. Amen. And we want to do that in a way that is joyful and generous. And we can't do that without each of us taking an ownership of being generous toward it. And so some of you here today are considering in year-end giving. Well, I just want to encourage you. Would you do it generously? And would you do it joyfully knowing that what you give will be used to serve the people among us? Let me pray for the offering and we'll continue. Let's pray. Lord God, you are, you are so generous. You did not hold back. You gave us your all. You gave us yourself. And on this Christmas Eve, we anticipate and we worship the coming King, your son, Jesus Christ. And so God, in light of that, would you continue to mold us even as we give and make an impression on us, Jesus Christ, your son, among us, each of us individually and us as a church, as a body. We lift this offering to you. May you use it to serve your people in a way that is honoring to you. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. If you have not given here before and you're considering, you can simply take out your phone and text the word give to the number 98977 uh, and it'll prompt you to give. Otherwise, for those of you who are in person, we'll be passing the offering bags around right now. Well, welcome once again. Merry Christmas Eve to everyone. Um, it's great to be worshiping with you this morning. If you are new among us, we just want to get a chance to know you and connect with you. So would you give us a chance by taking out your phone again if it's already out? Um, you can text the same number, 98977, with the word uh, hi, H-I. And then when you do that, you'll get a form back to you. If you fill that out, one thing's going to happen and you, you'll have two choices. We're going to send you one email and you can take that chance to either ignore the email or utilize the email um, to get to know a little bit more about us and see what is happening around here in this community. So if you would do that, take out your phone and text the word hi to 98977. Not only will that happen, but 
for every form that gets filled out, we're going to be donating $5 to a local organization that is serving and doing good in our community. And in this season, we're um, donating to an organization called Young Lives, uh, which provides mentoring and support for teen mothers. So please go ahead and take a time to do that. Otherwise, let's get ready to welcome up one of our senior pastors, Pastor Julia Pickerel, who will be giving us a brief message for today. Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas Eve. Oh, we're a little sleepy. You guys can't be sleepy yet. That's for tomorrow. You're not? Of course you're not, Eric. Guys, listen. Hello. Thank you for waking up early on Christmas Eve. I want to welcome those of you who are here and those of you who are online. If I don't know who you are or if you don't know who I am, my name is Pastor Julia. I'm one of our senior pastors here, and I'm very excited for Christmas Eve. How about you guys? All right. Now, I am going to talk for 12 hours because if you are a kid here, that's what you love, right? No, all right, no, I will not talk for 12 hours. I will talk for just a very little bit of time because after that, we have some really fun things. We have our nativity, which is why you guys are actually all here, and our choir. But before that, one of the things that we always do on Christmas Eve, and by always, I mean last year and now this year and for forevermore, is we greet one another in lots of different languages because we have a church that has folks from over 125 different nations. Right now, there's about 140 some nations represented. So anybody here speak French? Does anybody speak French? In French, we would say, Joyeux Noël. I did that really bad. I'm a really bad French speaker. Does anybody speak Spanish? Anybody? How do we say Merry Christmas in Spanish? Feliz Navidad. All right, let's move on. Oh, you know what I need to do? One moment. My notes. Because now we're going to say Merry Christmas in Swahili. Who here speaks Swahili? I know we've got a lot of Swahili speaking folks. You would say, Siki Kuya Christmasi. Everybody? Siki Kuya Christmasi. Very good. Now, how about Arabic speakers? We have many Arabic speakers in our church. And in Arabic, some, who here speaks Arabic? I'm looking at an Arabic speaker right now. I know a handful of others. We well, would say, Ait Milad Said. Did I do okay? All right. And now in American Sign Language, which we have a lot of folks who communicate in American Sign Language, we say, Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas Eve to all of you. Thank you for being here today. Now, if you are a kid in the room, I'm not going to quantify what I mean by kid, but if you consider yourself a kid in the room, so think for a moment about your sort of interior space. How are we doing today, guys? If you're a kid in the room, I want you to hop to your feet, hop to your feet, hop to your, both your feet, stand up now, turn around. All right. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> Sit back down. Here we go. Guess what we're going to talk about today? We are going to talk about treasures. Do you know why? Because I love them. I love looking for treasures. I love finding treasures. I love celebrating treasures. Do any of you have things at home that you would consider a treasure. Does anybody have a treasure? Raise your hand if you have a treasure, something that you treasure. Maybe it's a stuffed animal. Maybe it's a blanket. Do any of you have a little brother or sister that you treasure? Yes, you do. Come on, those of you who are 70, yes, you do. We all have things that we treasure. I have certain things that I treasure, which I wanted to show you today. Some of my treasures. First of all, this is my cookie treasure. My friend Eric Jr. made me this cookie. It is one of my treasures, and I'm going to explain why at the end of my little talk. This is an amazing treasure. Guess what else I have? as a treasure. You're not going to believe how amazing this is. Are you ready for it? 
Little spoons! <laughs> little spoons! Look! They're little! And they're spoons! I love little spoons because they remind me of places that I've gone that are special to me. And this little spoon holder is also my treasure. Guess where I found it? Can you guess? The trash. <laughs> Another treasure. Check out what I just found. Haven't seen this in about 45 years. I'm 51. My blankie from when I was six. Does anybody have a blankie with a silky edge? Yeah, you guys remember your, yeah, you do. It's all right. I found another treasure from high school and college. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Ophelia, <laughs> my stuffed animal. Uh, let's see, here's another great one. Check this out. This, are you ready for it? Yes, are you ready for it? Are you really ready for it? Because it's a good one. This was my daughter's shoe. And she's 18. And listen. All right, just because I have to be even with my kids, my middle son's blinky. Oh, and just because I have to be even with my kids, my oldest son's, I don't know what this is. I think it's a trivet. He was six when he drew these pictures, which I think is really funny because they're, they're not that awesome. But there's him, there's mommy, there's daddy, wait, that's him, and here's Jesus. Jesus loomed large in his life. Jesus was the whole side of the plate. I love treasures. And you know what an interesting thing is about treasures? Your treasures might not look like my treasures, right? Some of you might be thinking about my treasures. Those are not treasures, Julia. Your little spoons. You know what we think treasures look like? We think treasures look like gold bars. Do you know at Costco, you can buy yourself some gold bars. They sold $100 million worth of gold bars in the last quarter. I'm not sure how well these things are going to work as currency, if everything goes upside down, but anyway. You know what other treasures are? These, this is a cool treasure. Some of you guys might have one or want one. This is, have, have you guys heard of the Cybertruck, the Tesla Cybertruck? But the cyber truck got stuck and had to get towed out of this little hill by a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, Elon. All right. So we all have different understandings of what treasures are. Am I right? Yes. And we all have things that we treasure. Am I right? Yes. The word treasure, now listen to me here. Listen, listen. The word treasure means something that is of great worth. It's worth a lot. And it's something that's meant to be discovered. Are we just sang a Christmas song with these words, oh holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. Now, many of you are like, I don't know what any of these words really mean. What does it mean to pine? So I rewrote it. This is Julia Pickerel's elementary version. This night is so special. The stars are so beautiful and the sky is so bright. Tonight, God is born. God, a tiny baby, God in a messy manger. The world has been so messy for so long and we have all been hunting for all the wrong treasures until now. God is with us and we get the real treasure, actually two. Jesus is the most treasury treasure ever and we, Put your hand on your heart. Mamas, daddies, aunties, uncles, parents. We are a treasure to God. Christmas Eve is when we discover two treasures. 
The first treasure is this. It's that God came into the world as Jesus to be near to you. God came into a really messy spot to be near to you. Do you know how sometimes when you want to introduce yourself to someone, you get all fancy and you get all nice and you get the firm handshake and you look them in the eye? How is it that God introduced himself to us? Messy, I heard someone say it. A messy baby in a messy town with a messy family system. Stinky, smelly, blech. God in a manger. God introduced himself to you that way because he loves you and he wants to be your treasure. Now the second treasure that we find on Christmas Eve is not just that God introduces himself to us in that way. It's that when we receive him as king, when, when we come to this messy spot where Jesus is and we say, can I sit with you in your mess and in my mess? Do you know what happens to our soul? It feels its worth. What that means is that you discover that you are a treasure when you meet Jesus. There was a man in the Bible, his name was Paul, and he wrote a bit about what happens when we find God as our treasure. And he writes that when we find God as our treasure, we have this adventurously expectant. And we greet God with a child like, what's next, Papa? Like today, what's next? When do we open the gifts? When do we do the fun stuff? When do we eat? The, when do we eat? When do we play? When do we run around? When, what's next, Papa? That's what our hearts get to be filled with when we meet Jesus. His spirit touches our spirit and confirms who we really are. We know who he is. And we know who we are. Does anybody out there wonder who you are? Maybe you are 10 and you don't know who you are. Maybe you are 19 and you don't know who you are. Maybe you are 30 and you are sure you do not know who you are. When we know who he is, we discover who we are. Now, you know, we get mixed up about what treasure is. We think that treasure is money, we think that treasure is stuff. We think that treasure is what you can buy on TikTok. We think that treasure is a great career and everything working out. We, we think that treasure is all of those things and all of those things are they're fine. But they will never help you feel your worth. We get confused, that, that's a good one, there we go. Here's what Christmas is about, and here's what's happening when we do this nativity, which is just a French word that means the story of the birth of Jesus. Here's what's happening. Grown-ups and kids, everybody look at me. I'll look at you right there. The story is this. God treasures you so much that he came near to you. He did not want to be hard to find. He did not want to have to stay away from your mess. Do you know that God is comfortable in your mess? He came into a messy world. He came into a messy manger. And guess what? He came into my messy heart. Does anybody out there have sometimes a messy heart? Yes. Does anybody sometimes ever feel jealous? <laughs> Does anybody sometimes ever feel, wait, I said that backwards. Does anybody ever sometimes feel scared? Does anybody ever feel nervous or confused or a little bit upside down or just sad? Does your heart ever feel messy? Well, guess what? God says for him, that's no problem. He says, welcome me right in. I'm great at messy stuff. He calls you his treasure. 
He wants you to know that you are worth so much. There is another man in the Bible. His name was David. David was a very messy man. Can anybody say very messy man? Dude was a very messy man. But all over the Psalms, we, we see that he writes these things about who he is in the eyes of God. And listen to this line, I am beautifully and wonderfully made. Can you say that with me? I am beautifully and wonderfully made. Mamas, what would happen if you could say that truly about yourself in the life of your kid? God, you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful. Are you ready for some very good news? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. God came to be a treasure for us. When we receive him as a treasure, we get to experience ourself as being treasured, the kind of, of self that we were meant to feel, the thing that God made us for. And that on Christmas Eve, what we are doing right now is not just telling an old story about an old treasure, but listen to me here. Listen, are you leaning in? There is a new treasure for some of you. There is a new treasure, and his name is Jesus. And you know, my friend Eric, who made me this cookie, oh, hang on here. So his mom texted me. His mom works here at the church. She's remarkable. She texts me this picture, and she says in the text, um, uh, Eric Jr. said that this top left cookie is for you. And I was like, who? And she was like, the, Eric was like, Julia. And she's like, not usually my kid is making a cookie for Julia, but he made a cookie for me. And she said, why? And he said, it's kind of a messy one, and I think she'll like it. Now here is why I think that is wonderful. It's because that is the heart of God. Messy cookie, anyone? They're the best kind, the most frosting, the most yumminess. God comes to us this Christmas and it doesn't matter what kind of messiness you have, you are his treasure. That's what Christmas is all about. Now as I end, in just a moment, I'm going to light the Christ candle. And I'm going to invite some of you, young or old, kids or not kids or sort of kids. So if you are, if you are wondering, what does it feel like to be a treasure? What does it feel like to be a treasure? If you are thinking, I've never found God as my treasure, what we're going to do is this. You are going to, in just a moment when I have a stand, some of you kids and grown-ups alike, I'm going to invite you to come forward with your messy cookie self, <laughs> your messy heart self, and I'm going to invite you to allow us to pray for you. For some of you, you might say, I want to invite this treasure of Jesus into my heart. For some of you, you might just say, I need to be reminded that I am a treasure because I have forgotten. So in just a moment, young or old, I'm going to invite you to do that. And I'm going to come down here too, and we'll have a moment of prayer. And then, and then, are you ready? Come on. Yes because you have been so patient, and then we will have our nativity and our choir. So let me walk over here, and we will light the Christ candle. A reading from John 1. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. 
He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent or human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Now, as we sing this last song, would you all stand with me? And if you are a child, if you are a grown-up, and this Christmas Eve you think to yourself, I would quite like to invite this Jesus, this treasure, into my heart. I want to be a friend of God, if that's you. I'm going to walk down here to the front, and you are invited to walk up here to the front. And we will give you a small gift, have a small prayer, and then we will continue our service. So we're going to sing a song called, I think, Silent Night, which I think is very funny because I'm pretty sure it was not a silent night. So you don't have to worry about the ambiance or anything. So if you're a kiddo or an adult, and we can pray with you right now, you want to invite the treasure who is Jesus into your heart. Come and meet me down here in just a moment.
may be seated. Luke 2, verses 4 through 20. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. and She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Matthew 2, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Let's stand together and continue worshiping.
Well, everyone, thank you so much for spending Christmas Eve with us. Just a few quick things before you go. We want to invite you next week. We have service at the same time at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. You'll hear from both of our senior pastors, Eric as well as Julia. So we invite you to that. And later in that evening, because it's the last day of the year, we'll have a watch night service led by Dr. Charles Montgomery Jr. So if you're around, would you come and join us for those? Lastly, if you're considering exploring the Christian faith in this coming year in a place that is non-judgmental, that is safe, and that you, where you can ask questions, we have Alpha coming up in next month across all our cities and even online. So would you please consider joining? You can go to askatalpha.com to find more information. Otherwise, let me bless us and we can go. May the generous love of the Father and the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is given to us during this Christmas season and the comfort of your Holy Spirit in each of us. Keep us and be with us in our hearts and in our homes as we go celebrate your birth this Christmas. We worship you, God. Thank you. Amen. Merry Christmas. God bless you.